management committee. I've been joined by the Honorable Councilor Paul Kukoyan. And we do anticipate Councilor Jose Risa in a minute now. So we have a fun house, a packed house today. The way this agenda seems to have been structured, the first three items all pertain to one project. So we'll be hearing all three at the same time. So that being said, we'll move on to the other items so that my colleague can be here when the issue of the three items actually gets to in front of us. But before I start, I just want to first welcome you to City Hall. Thank you for being here. As you can see, and in here, the acoustics are not the best in this room. So we need to talk a little bit slower so that as the sound waves bounce off, it makes sense what we're saying, we hope. Also, if you have conversations, if you please take them outside, because those conversations do interfere with our ability to understand what the person at the microphone is saying. When you do come to the microphone, please give us your name and address and your position on the case. If you find yourself in a position where you agree with the previous speakers, it's okay to say I agree with the previous speakers and add anything else that is different. It's not like we have to hear the same thing over and over again. If you have something new to share, we would like to hear that. Also, if you wrote an elegant, eloquent letter, if you get to the point of the letter, some of you will start a letter and you'll realize you're still a page away. Get to the point of your letter so that way you can take advantage of your time. So, let's start with, we're back with item number four. You can read that into the record. Do you want to do the director of planning's report this week, Councilman? So we have the director wait till the end? I don't know. No, but let's do this. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go over the director. Thank you. Let's Thank you, Councilman Mike LeGrand, for the record. Um, happy New Year. We're happy to be here today. Um, the department's moved along very well. We've gotten about four environmental impact reports out last week, um, so we're happy to see those move along. And we've been working really hard, continuing on the development reform strategic plan, and we're looking forward to presenting a lot of the items we have planned for next year in our proposed budget that will be before the council um, very shortly. Um, some other items. We continue to work on the city's mobility element this year. Um, we're taking on the transportation element of the city. We have a web page up that's available through www.lacityplanning.org, um, and you'll see um, different ways to engage and do public outreach through a company called MindMixer that allows for people to put comments up in a friendly manner to get a dialogue going around transportation issues in their community and how they like to see the future. And it's um, been really well received. We have a lot of hits on that web page, and we're happy to use kind of a new, more modern form of engagement um, before we go out to our formal public workshops. Um, some other items, as you know, the Hollywood Community Plan was adopted by the Planning Commission. We're happy to see that hopefully coming before this body very shortly. And we're working on a number of um, upcoming community plans throughout the city. In addition, we've been spending a lot of time with the council, CLA, and the mayor's office looking at um, what would happen with the non-existence of a redevelopment agency, how would that um, impact our land use controls in the city, things like delimitations that are on properties in the downtown area, um, items where they have a more thorough level of review than we currently have in our city ordinances, um, how can we ensure that we maintain the things that are good, and some of the things that we feel um, where CRA may not have provided the same goals and objectives the city has, how can we um, not necessarily carry those items on? So we're spending a lot of time kind of going through that, working with our city attorney's office and um, our policymakers at the state legislature to make sure that um, if there is any kind of um, future that would entail economic development challenges, we want to make sure that we're a party to those discussions so that we can have the land use controls and protections in place as we move forward for Los Angeles. So we're spending a lot of resources and time um, monitoring that issue. 
And that concludes my report, and I'll be available for this hearing if you have any questions. One of the observations, and thank you for that report, um, when we talk about the budget issues and we put into context the number of employees we used to have versus what we're working with and the amount of work they are carrying, um, I understand some individuals are filling for two or three positions, at least the work programs are, are such. Um, are you able to quantify the dollar impact in our delays and or our need to address this issue of how we grow our budget uh, without projects moving forward, without jobs, mm -hmm. our economic pie does not grow. Uh, are we in a position to begin quantifying either the negative or positive impact of these changes? Yes, definitely. Um, we'd be happy to present that to the Budget and Finance Committee as well as this committee um, as we move forward. I mean, things like the projects before you today um, have a huge economic impact on the city and our ability to get those projects, not just the construction jobs, but the long-term tax benefits um, from many of these projects into the city coffers makes a huge impact on the entire region and not only the city. Um, in terms of our staffing, we're about 75% of our fees come from application fees for development. The other 25% comes from the general fund. So we're a department that we want to make sure that that general fund dollars are used wisely to do things like community plans, mobility elements, the housing element, um, legislative items that come before this board through our code studies unit, making sure that those core services of the plan are maintained, but also on the case processing side that we can bring these projects to the city council for adoption swiftly with a lot of transparency and good public input, um, but we're not causing unburdensome delays so that we stifle investment in the city and also don't keep our workers employed um, and our taxes coming back into the city and keeping competitive with the rest of the region who made these small cities are a lot very nimble and able to move quickly through the planning process and don't have quite the extensive outreach that we have with our neighborhood councils and our various stakeholders. So we want to make sure that we preserve that ability to have that input, but also we have the opportunity to act swiftly. Thank you, Mr. Nguyen. Um, any questions or comments? Okay, well, thank you, sir, and thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm going to shift a little bit here. Uh, we do have one person for public comment on the card, and I need to keep that person waiting uh, all the way through. It's Ruth Sarnoff for public comment. And this will open public comment, and after you're done, we'll close public comment, period. Yes, ma'am. Ruth Sarnoff. Um, uh, two minutes. I would like to um, urge um, the people that look at land use to um, allow for some kind of um, agendizing of the uh, needs of uh, local people who are trying to do uh, good organic farming in the Southern California area and uh, many and within the city of Los Angeles. And I have been following it a little bit in the press. and. Um, I came here just kind of on a fluke because I was at City Council this morning and, and was still here and looked to see what committees were meeting and I thought um, this was something I've been wanting to do for a long time because I think often what happens is there are specific projects and those projects are um, dealt with in a committee or dealt with in a specific way and people have no way really to kind of reconnoiter into the, the big big picture. And I think uh, with land use, uh, preserving the localized uh, farms that are using sustainable um, food production, uh, have animals and um, sometimes and are uh, creating local food, which is environmentally much better. It's better for global warming. It's better, better for uh, less use of pesticides and chemicals and that kind of thing. And I think it would be great if we could have more um, thought about preserving farmland and pre preserving the zones where people can grow food. I, it was a tremendous loss when the uh, farm, big farm that was feeding 500 families in the southern part of uh, Los Angeles was lost. And, um, and I think uh, there's a lot of people now that are working in yards and just sharing their backyards, front yards, and everything else to grow food. And I wish that 
we wouldn't get zoned out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sarnoff. So that concludes public comment period. Now we can move to item number four. Oh. Item four, council members, is an appeal uh, that has been filed by Susan Gans on behalf of the Roxbury Beverly Will Homeowners Alliance. Uh, and she's appealing uh, the action of the Planning Commission which uh, approved a variance for the expansion of, um, actually it's a vesting conditional use for the expansion of uh, a high school, the Yeshiva University Boys High School in CD5. Okay, by understanding, uh, Mr. Coons, are you here? I'd like to come to the microphone. My understanding is that you have achieved a compromise that might allow us to cut to the chase. Yes, sir. Um, I believe you have a letter in front of you that was submitted to the clerk with some revisions to the conditions on this case, and that would settle the dispute that's in front of you. I think the action we'd request Plum to do is to grant in part for purposes of amending those conditions. And we worked for two years on through this last weekend up to today, and that does settle this dispute and will allow the high school to expand while still protecting the surrounding community. Well, for the record, we have the appellant, Eric Mumar, or Maman, and then we have the applicant, Elizabeth Camacho, so I'm assuming we are all on the same page? Yes, we are. Yes, great. So can you just both state that for the record? Good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yes, Elizabeth Camacho on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we have reached a compromise that resolves the appeal in its entirety. As Chris mentioned, there are specific amendments to the conditions of approval that are submitted in the letter that you've received. We have two more items that we're requesting, um, and I've provided a, a sheet that lists the three requests on them for your convenience. The second one is really just to conform one of the mitigation measures to one of the changed conditions, so they're, they're consistent. And the third is just to update the mitigation monitoring program, again, to conform to the revised mitigation measures. So with those three conditions, um, the uh, appellant has agreed to dismiss the remainder of the appeal and supports the project, and he'll speak to that in a moment. And we would request that with those three changes that the um, uh, that, that those three changes be made. Thank you, Ms. Camacho. Sir? Thanks very much. Yes. yes, we worked hard to reach a compromise here. We have um, uh, changes um, to the conditions that are set forth in the letter that's been submitted. Uh, and with those changes, the Roxbury Beverly Homeowners Alliance has agreed to um, settle this dispute. And uh, I guess we're dismissing the appeal or it's being granted? The re dismissing the remainder of the appeal in consideration for the changes that we agreed to. Great. Great. Uh, music to everyone here's ears. Uh, in, in terms of uh, reading to the record, uh, Mr. Stanley or Mr. City Attorney, uh, what would be the most precise directive coming from this committee to the council? It will actually what was just stated to grant in part, deny in part, as reflected by the revised conditions that were submitted to the clerk. And that will be the actions committee. We have a second on that? Second. Okay, that will be the action of this committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we get to items one, two, and three. Can you read those into the record? Uh, sure, council members. Item one is a development agreement between the city and Westfield uh, LLC for a proposed mixed use project in CD3. Item two is an appeal as it relates to the track map for that project. Uh, the appeal has been filed by, has been filed by Mr. Gwen Merley and also uh, by Jeff Bornstein. Item three, uh, it's again an appeal by the same individuals, but it has to do with all the actions of the City Planning Commission as it relates to a CUP for alcohol, CUP for auto uses, a project permit compliance, and again, it's for the uh, mixed use project in CD3. So that covers all items, correct? Uh, yes, Council. One, two, and three. Um, please introduce yourself and uh, welcome to the committee. Thank you. Good afternoon, Councilman Reyes and members of the committee. My name is Alva Nuno O'Donnell. I am the city planner assigned to the village at the Westfield Topanga Project, which consists of 1,027,000 square foot mixed use development proposed in two phases. The project includes a mix of commercial, office, hotel, and theater option. A concurrent hearing was held on August the 3rd at the Marriott at Warner Center with over 500 people in attendance. 
and 66 speakers. The project and its associated cases were before the City Planning Commission on October 27, 2011, in a meeting that lasted over seven hours. What the committee has before it are four appeals, two appeals filed on Vesting Track 69943, and two appeals filed on CPC 2011-382. Staff has reviewed the appeal points and is prepared to respond to any questions as needed. In addition, a development agreement for a 15-year term as recommended by the City Planning Commission is also before you. I know you have a large crowd today, but we're here to answer any questions you may have. And then, again, for the record, how many meetings occurred at the Commission level on this issue? Was there more than one Commission meeting? It was one meeting? Commission meeting that lasted seven hours. One that lasted seven hours? Correct. So what time did it start? Uh, it started right before lunch, and then it ended about 5.30, I think it was. Oh, wow. Okay. So there was opportunity for everyone to state their position. Plenty of opportunity. Great. Um, any questions of the staff, given the presentation? Okay. All right. So thank you. We will ask you to come back with uh, the questions. Thank you very much. Uh, by show of hands, how many folks are here in support? Okay, this is in support of the project, correct? In support of the development. Now, how many folks are here in support of the appeal? Okay. We have a, a, a healthy stack here, folks. So I'm thinking of time management here. Um, since they're all being reviewed at one time, let's do this. If we can give the appellant uh, how many are appealing again? We've got one appellant and how many need to speak on the appeal? Two appellants and how many speakers supporting the appellant? About four or five. Okay, so let's do this. Let's start with 20 minutes for the appellant. I'll give you a position, and then I'll ask those who are appealing to step up once the appellant gives his case or her case. So, appellant, please come forward. Councilman, uh, do you want to hear from Mr. Murley or from Mr. Bornstein? Either one. How are we going to split the time up? Is it 10 minutes per? Well, why don't you take the five minutes? Let's start with five minutes with you and five minutes, and then we'll go. If you need more, we'll, we'll go with that. But I want to make sure you're given, the parents are given the time given to, to speak. Right now, five minutes. Uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you for hearing me out this afternoon. Please yeah. remain an address. Sure, of course. My name is, let me get this thing so I don't have to bend over. My name is Jeff Bornstein. I live at 7507 Winnetka Avenue. And I'm representing myself. Okay. 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 Again, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilperson Kutkorian. Thank you, Councilperson Reyes, for hearing me out here. I'm here today to do what I can to ensure the utmost public benefit for the local community from Westfield's proposed project. The October 27, 2011 meeting in Van Nuys was not ample in time or scope to adequately benefit the community. The chair, besides praising the project, was at the same time pressuring commissioners for yes votes, unanimous yes votes. Those were his words, unanimous yes votes. One commissioner even stated, we are stressing. We got this late and not heavy in public benefit. That's my, that's my basic concern that there was a seven hour meeting no more no less and that was all the time that these commissioners had to come up with some public benefit they received this document at nine o'clock in the morning nine a.m. that morning everybody would I have copies for everybody if you'd like one with redactions with additions it's not the way to do diligence. 
projects of this magnitude can't be rushed through. In the 80s, when I was in college, they used to talk of the city centers concept. As proposed, the center of the universe in Woodland Hills, Warner Center, is a Costco. This is the West Valley's last opportunity for a center up to Santa Monica, 3rd Street, and the Grove for the West Valley shopping base, which goes from Encino to Thousand Oaks. Westfield's decision to supersize Topanga Westfield showed their lack of vision. They proposed this just as the economy was going to collapse. They added a Neiman Marcus and a monstrous parking garage that was foolish. Now we are trusting Westfield to have the foresight at this time with this ill-conceived project. Someone has to look out for the community. Someone has to look out for the community, Mr. Krikori and Mr. Reyes. Someone has to look out for the community. Where do I want to add the public benefit? What am I looking for in terms of public benefit? Initially, I would like to see the walkway, bikeway, further off Victory Boulevard. If you go to Balboa or you go to Woodley, the bike path, walk path, is 40 feet off the street. Over by this project, it's 10 feet off the street. That's not right. It's not conducive to walking and biking. We need to tie in public transportation to complement the project before it's built. Because if you t try to tie in public transportation after it's built, it isn't as integrated. We need to integrate public transportation into this project. The gas station at the corner of Victory and Owens Mouth impedes on pedestrian access. Per the specific plan, Owens Mouth is supposed to be a, a walkway, a parkway, the Owens Mouth Parkway. How can you make those two jive, putting that gas station on that corner and having a walkway? How can you make those two jive? Another concept that I had come up with would be a pedestrian bridge over the entrance on Victory Boulevard. So that way pedestrians and bicyclists don't have to cross the paths of vehicles. We were promised that initially a bridge over Victory Boulevard. Well, times are tough. A bridge over, a, p a pedestrian bridge over the Victory entrance right next to the Costco is essential so that people don't get run over and people don't get stopped trying to make a right turn into the facility. Finally, Costco needs to be further back from the street. You look at the Tampa and Sepulveda Costco's, they are 60 yards off the street and 40 yards off the street. It's a long way off the street compared to what we're dealing with. Please, please, we need more public benefit for this project to go forward. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hearn, the other applicant, uh, appellant on the project. Not the applicant today. Appellant. My name is Gordon Murley. I'm president of Woodland Hills Homeowners. I live at 4128 Morrow Drive, Woodland Hills 91364. Honorable Councilman Reyes and Honorable Councilman Krikorian, we're here because we feel that the public has not been given the opportunities this is the first time in my history of over 25 years in dealing with the city in which a subdivision, uh, environmental impact report, and a project have all been combined into a single hearing for the first. So with one to two minutes, it certainly doesn't give the public a chance to address all of these different items that were on it. And I believe that it's required that each one of these has a hearing for it. We're taking all of them once again here today. Let's just take the subdivision first. The subdivision has, I believe, 13 land lots and 14 air lots. This starts creating problems because you're going to have parking and each individual building has to have its own parking requirements. You don't get into shared parking until such time as each 
one of your entities on a piece of land have adequate parking on it. So we think that when you look at this number of lots, it starts creating problems later in the city with its own ordinances and the development of this center. But let me remind you that Warner Center is a regional center. It has a specific plan, and we need to make it so that this works. There's a new, a new specific plan that's coming forth, which we have to read now to make comments on by the 6th of February. This is setting precedents and ignoring things that should not have been ignored at the time. So with the subdivision, other areas in Warner Center have wanted to divide them into smaller lots. And in one case, they were given two when they wanted five. Here we've got 13 land lots, which is way too many for this particular development to do it. The next thing that we need to, so we think you need to go back and look at how this is being subdivided for the future of a regional center, because this would set a precedent. The next thing we have to look at, let's look at the CUB, the alcohol. They want a master one, but they want to go to the state. Just remember, in the city of LA, you have the right to set conditions. The state has no conditions, so if you give them a master and say go to the state to get it, they can do whatever they want and no conditions would be set on it. So we think you cannot have, with this type of development, a master plan with various restaurants in various places and would be run far differently than if it was within a mall itself. And conditions need to be set on the type of restaurants and when they change, we need to look at them also, for the protection of your own police department to be able to enforce what goes on under an alcoholic beverage license. So we would request that you not allow a master, but let each individual restaurant have to apply for their own under the city of Los Angeles, and each hearing have the conditions put on it for the type and the appropriateness of that particular We, you heard mention the Owens Mouth Parkway. In the current specific plan, it says the Owens Mouth area shall be pedestrian oriented. If a few, 20 pump fuel station and a three acre store with a 450 foot wall along Victory Boulevard is pedestrian oriented, it would be news to me because filling station certainly is auto oriented and this particular store that they're proposing to be part of it is a membership store. So it is not pedestrian oriented at all. So it flies in the face of what we have in the specific plan calling for a pedestrian oriented along Victory Boulevard and Owens Mouth. And if you read it, there is no way this could be considered to you be that. You could continue. If you would like three more minutes? I mean, pardon? Are you done or do you need a few no, more minutes? No, I need more time. Okay, give it three more minutes, please. Also, environmentally, staff had recommended that this project be a gold leads. Well, I think you will find it's back to silver for overall, but for the filling station and the three acre retail, it will not even be lead certified. They say we will make leads, but we will not get it certified. This really is downgrading all of Warner Center as a regional because if they don't have to meet leads, why should anybody else within the city meet leads? And we think this has to be a requirement. And especially for those, if the center is saying it's going to be silver, the city says it should be gold, at least the filling station and the other should be at least silver if you're going to want to get your carbon patterns and the green that you say you want in the city. Also with this large, they have not come up with how they will handle their trash, their pallets and other things. And if you look, go around to their others, you see their pallets are stacked out 
it becomes unsightly for a regional center, and especially with the shopping as they're proposing, to not have it all enclosed so it doesn't become an eyesore within a regional center. It should be required that they have to make everything indoor and not put it outside And when they get around to it. The same organization that wants to do this, they want deliveries all day, all night, except for the gasoline, which could not be during specific peak hours. But there are residences, and to use Owen's mouth, for delivery trucks at between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. is a little ludicrous if you're going to have a residential area with this. So there are a number of items that need to be looked at very seriously in the long term because this would start setting a precedent for all of Warner Center in spite of the specific plan. Do you have these items in writing, sir? We turn them all in uh, with the appeal. Okay. So we will be able to review those. What I'd like to do is give those other individuals who are supporting the appeal and if there's any minutes left, we'll get back to, to you to see if there's anything else you want to add. Well, there's one more item that I would like to mention. There are conditional uses in here. There were no separate hearings. The conditional uses were put in by the city, and there were never any hearings on the conditional uses. And normally within the city of Los Angeles, when something has a conditional use, there's a separate hearing for each one of the conditions for the public to comment on, there was absolutely no way the public could address the conditional uses in the way it's been presented in a nine-volume EIR. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. We do have two cards submitted that have stated they are supporting the and opposing the project. That's Shirley B. Blessing and Gary Brazman or Kerry Brazman. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, we got two minutes. Uh, my name is Shirley Blessing. I live at 5901 Kelvin Avenue, Woodland Hills. Uh, I ask your indulgence for a little extra time because I've been involved in this project since the 1991 specific plan. I was on that committee that formed that plan. And for the last six years, I have spent considerable time as a permanent member of the revised one or center specific plan, so I believe that what I have to say has some credence, perhaps more than the average speaker coming up here. Why don't you go ahead and start okay. expressing your point of view, because that's okay. 30 minutes, seconds of why you should have to go ahead. Okay. First of all, I believe the city, it's my opinion, speaks out of two sides of their mouth. They're advocating pedestrian-friendly streets and transit-oriented. This particular project, Costco and its filling station, fulfill neither of them. Not only that, it's a members only uh, operation that disenfranchises everybody else for the use of that size of property. Land is not finite. Once you use it, you've used it up. And to have, at this day and age, a parking lot that's the size of three football fields and a one-story wholesale members-only shop is ludicrous. The only reason they didn't build a two-story Costco, in the words of Costco and their associates, it was not economically feasible. But it is feasible for the community. We would accept a two-story Costco with its own parking garage. We don't have to use up all that land for one individual to serve their own profit line. We are a community that expected, according to Mayor Bradley, to have this as the century city of the West Valley. And what we're having now is an industrial park. Because if you go through our Los Angeles, all the Costco's are located within an industrial park set way back, and unless you're looking for them, you don't even know they're there. This one will be very, very obvious in the most prominent part of Woodland Hills Warner Center. I beg of you to not support the project as it exists today. 
Many in our community would move fast forward for a two-story Costco, especially one without a filling station. There are ample filling stations in the community. This filling station uh, uh, will have approximately 2,100 cars filling uh, up every day. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if you, uh, if you, if you uh, give her... Uh, I'm just worried. I'm just concerned that if you give her extra time, there seem to be a lot of other people on the other side, so you may set a precedent here. I am trying to keep that balance, so I'm keeping yeah. my eye on the clock. I appreciate that, Mr. City Attorney. It, if so you have to have like me wind it up, I think I made my message fairly clear. It does not belong where it is, especially the filling station. I hope you would take it under serious advisement and not approve it as it is presented. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Besson. Our uh, next speaker is Mr. Brazen. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Kerry Brazen, LA Neighbors United. Uh, we love our friends at Westfield. Let me repeat, we love our friends at Westfield. They're great corporate citizens in Century City and across the city. But today we stand with the appellants uh, in opposing the project in its current form for a couple of reasons that I'll tell you quickly. One, we're concerned that this lovely project that you're seeing in this rendering never gets built. Uh, as, you've, as you've probably determined from, from reading the materials, there's two phases to this project. There's a phase one and a phase two. Most of what you're seeing right here on Topanga is phase two, which may or may not come later. Most of our issues are with phase one, uh, the Victory Boulevard and the Owens Mouth sides of the project, which you're not seeing, uh, which include what we call the, the Great Wall or the not-so-great wall of Warner Center and the Costco truck stop. So we believe we can get a better, there should be a better, a better phase one project that stands on its own in the event that phase two is never built. Uh, as, the, as the speakers before me have suggested, phase one on its own is not a pedestrian oriented project. If this were a POD, this, uh, that particular use, the automotive use would not be acceptable. And we're trying to create an urban town center in Warner Center that can be the cornerstone for a modern, a modern town center going forward. So we, we urge you to look at phase one at the details more carefully and grant the appeal in, in the interest of securing a better phase one project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I don't see any more cards supporting the appellants. So I'm assuming there's no one else out there that wants to speak to support the appellants. Okay, so that being said, is there one person who'd like to come on up, sir? Give us your name and address. Did you fill out a card? Okay. All right. Okay, no problem. Please give us your name and address. Uh, my name is uh, Pat Patton. I live at 4139 Sautillo Street, Woodland Hills, California, 91364. I'm an officer and a member of the Woodland Hills Homeowners Organization, and I, I concur with the appellate. Uh, our organization is not against Westfield, Neither is it against Costco. It is against the present presentation. In other words, it is our view that it does not reflect the needs of the community as a center. It may be the center of the Woodland Hills area. However, it is not anything that you can be proud of at this moment as being prepared. And we respectfully request that they have a continuation so that we can have more public input. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I think that concludes the phase where the appellants have the right to present their point of view. Uh, now we can move towards the applicant and we get the applicant to come on up and they would like to provide their presentation. And then we'll go through the cards. Well, let's give the applicant time to present the case, and then we'll go from there. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My, my name is Larry Green. I'm Senior Vice President of U.S. Development for Westfield, and I'm head of the L.A. region. I've been with Westfield for 20 years. My office is located at the company's U.S. headquarters at 11601 Wilshire Boulevard here in Los Angeles. Like many here today, I grew up at Topanga Plaza, shopping, dining, and even ice skating. And it's incredibly satisfying to see what Topanga is today, 
one of Westfield's premier retail properties. The Wall Street Journal recently reported that since 2010, only four and a half million square feet has been constructed. This is the lowest levels in over 31 years. The construction industry and all those that are part of that economic engine continue to hurt. At the village, we stand ready to invest immediately. And we'll bring with us some of the nation's best shops, restaurants, and one of the incredible retailers of the world, Costco. Once completed, the village will transform an urban site into a world-class transit-oriented destination, providing an important place for our friends and neighbors in the valley to come and play, come work, and enjoy. Our investment resulting from the village, our investment and the benefits resulting from the village are incredible, particularly now when we need to get the private sector moving again. A $450 million investment, which will immediately create jobs. Over 3,000 construction and development jobs. These are jobs on the ground now. 4,000 permanent jobs, office jobs, retail jobs, hotel jobs, landscaping jobs, engineering jobs, janitorial. These are important jobs that will put our friends and our neighbors back to work. The benefits are tangible and significant. This investment will generate key resources to pay for our teachers, our firefighters, and police. $7.9 million in new revenues into our community every year. $198 million in new revenues to our community over the next 25 years. Revenue and investment which will flow back into the valley, into our roads, into our public transit, and into our infra infrastructure helping to address some of the most important issues facing our community. In total, the village will be one of, one of our community's largest economic engines, generating $636 million in annual economic activity. And do you know what is most exciting about the village? That I get to fo follow in my father's footsteps in my com community and with the support of our community. I'm incredibly proud to be here with our lead developer, John Alderson. John's unwavering commitment to carry out a dialogue with the community was recognized by the Woodland Hills Tarzana Chamber of Commerce in his receipt of the 2011 Joseph Stoller Memorial Award. John's hard work has resulted in over 8,000 residents supporting the village. The Canoga Park Neighborhood Council and the Winnetka Neighborhood Council supporting the village. The SEIU, the Building Trades, and the Carpenter Unions are here supporting the village. VICA and the Valley Economic Alliance are supporting the village. These are some of our closest, most important neighbors, and they are united in their support of the village. Mr. Green, with all due respect, can we get into the project description and the impacts? Because I want to make sure we're within those 20 minutes as well. We can. I, I would like to just maybe ask if the supporters could just please rise. You beat me to the punch. All right. <laughs> okay, the please. Supporters, please rise. Great. We sincerely thank all of you for your support. It's been incredible getting to this point, and we thank you very much. And members of the, of the Plum Committee, we're all here today to ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Larry. Good afternoon. Happy New Year. I'm pleased to be here today. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the project as you've requested. I'd like to, to let you know that uh, you have a handout of all the slides that you're seeing on the screen here today, so feel comfortable watching the slides, knowing that you have a backup behind you. When I'm finished, Cindy Sterrett is going to uh, stand up, 
and uh, and speak in rebuttal to some of the things that we've heard already, and and uh, outline some of the actions that we're asking for today. My name is John Alderson. I'm the development director for Westfield, the applicant. Our offices are at 11601 Wilshire Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, again, I'd like to thank you for allowing us to uh, present our dynamic multi-use project. I would also like to thank uh, Gordon Murley and Shirley Blessing. I'd like to thank Jeff Bornstein, and I'd like to thank Carrie, who, who I have yet to meet, uh, for continuing to uh, push us to make this a better project. The process has been long. It's, a, it's included extended time, and we think it's the best project that we can bring before you today. Over the last several years, we've worked hard with the community and your staff to create a project that will not only transform this property, but will set a high standard of la in landscape and design. We see the village as a place to get away from the car, enjoy the beautiful climate, and still accomplish everyday needs. We will bring a world-class retail brands while integrating a hotel for people to stay in, an office building for people to work in, restaurants and cafes for people to dine in, and entertainment venues to go and see a movie. At the heart of the project is the transformation of this urban superblock into a dynamic outdoor shopping experience. The village property sits on a 31-acre parcel located between Topanga Canyon Boulevard, Owensmouth Avenue, Irwin Street, and Victory Boulevard. Today, the property is one continuous block that is entitled for a 2 million square foot office and hotel project. The village is much more interactive with a mix of uses that is one half the square footage of the previous approved hotel and office project. The project takes one large block and breaks it into nine smaller blocks with 2.7 miles of walking paths between and around them. Allow me to walk you through the different components now. Building number one is the existing Crate and Barrel store on the corner of Topanga Canyon Boulevard and Victory. As you walk east across the Landscape Plaza, building number two is Costco, the anchor store. Walking west, buildings three, four, five, and six are a mixture of one and two story buildings that host a variety of retail and restaurants spilling out into our open patios and gathering spaces. It is here where you truly appreciate the connectivity of uses and the ease of walkability. Walking south, buildings seven, eight, and nine continue the experience of retail, cafes, and entertainment while hosting the office and the hotel in the two larger buildings. Finally, and central to the project is a parking structure that is engaged by the retail and entertainment that surrounds it. The entitlements include the development of nearly 445,000 square feet of retail with the option for a movie theater, a grocery store, over 53,000 square feet of restaurant uses, nearly 15,000 square feet of community and cultural uses, 285,000 square feet of office, and a 275-room hotel. Mr. All Anderson, if I may interrupt for a second, on the previous slide and given what you just shared with us, which elements are in the different phases? Yeah, thank you for asking. Can we, Cameron, can we go back to the previous slide that has the numbers on it? Building one exists, building two is in the first phase, building three, four, five, and six are in the first phase with a component of the parking garage. Okay. And okay. Then, okay. The entry off to Panga Canyon Boulevard is established, which is between buildings five and seven, and the landscaping around the perimeter is scheduled in phase one. In the context of this layout, where does the river walk or river elements? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Uh, behind building number two, is the corner of Owens Mouth Boulevard and Victory. That is the corridor that, that extends directly north uh, along our Topanga uh, Canyon uh, Plaza Mall and right to the river. Okay, thank you. You trying to mess me up? <laughs> uh, the project does include service parking and multi-level parking facilities while emphasizing transit connections and pedestrian and bicycle opportunities. I think it goes without saying I could talk about the village for hours, and I promise not to do that here today. Uh, but what I would like to do is focus on a few elements of the project that highlight the benefits the, that the village will bring to the community. There are three key areas of the project that will benefit this community. Developing a green transit and pedestrian-oriented project, creating a true community gathering place, and keeping Costco in the West Valley in a state-of-the-art building, building integrated to the village experience. One of the key principles of the village is to design a project that is green and sustainable. In every aspect of the design, we looked at ways to reduce our energy and water use, minimize and recycle waste, and get people out of their cars by taking transit or walking to the village. 
Westfield has a strong reputation for green design and sustainable developments. From the small steps to the big commitments, this project includes sustainable measures that will meet the green building ordinance of the City of Los Angeles. We also paid special attention to designing a project that would reduce our energy and water usage from day one. Some key com uh, com commitments are more than 200 skylights and a cool roof design on Costco's roof and on other buildings, as well as heat reflective roofs on all buildings. This reduces the heat island effect. We also have reduced uh, the uh, use of, of water by using drought tolerant landscaping, smart irrigation controls, underground water retention, permeable paving, and natural bioswells along Victory Boulevard to manage the runoff and recycle the water for landscape irrigation. Together, these measures will reduce our water and energy consumptions during operations and speak to our, our level of commitment to sustainability. One of the key factors to a true sustainable project is to get people out of their cars by inspiring them to use transit, bikes, and good old-fashioned walking. West Valley can take pride in the, in the vast public transit options currently available in Warner Center. No other location besides downtown Los Angeles is as well served by public transit as is the West Valley. Our goal is to make taking transit easy by creating transit direct connections to the village. We do this by connecting the entire project to the existing transit hub along Owens Mouth, as well as incorporating a series of bus stops along the perimeter of the village. Next, we are mindful to connect the village to the newly adopted 2010 City of Los Angeles bike plan. In purple, you can see the Backbone Bikeway Network connects to our multi-use trails on Owens Mouth Street and Topanga Canyon Boulevard. From there, our own system of bike paths will further connect to Victory, to Irwin, and to the river. We agree with the Planning Commission's recommendation to contribute towards better connecting the village to the river along the bikeway network. To encourage walkability to the project from transit and adjoining neighborhoods, the village has created a series of pedestrian paseos, shown here in turquoise, that connect the entire property inside and out. The lushly landscape design creates inviting walkways while shade and street furniture that invite everyone to walk around the property connect to the mixes of uses and spend time in the beautiful gathering places. Let's take a look at how visitors and residents will access the site. The village has three key entrances off Owens Mouth, Victory, and Topanga. Owens Mouth is a critical entrance connecting directly to the transit hub and will be designed to be inviting, safe, and free from vehicular conflict. The Victory entrance connects directly to Topanga Plaza with an improved crossing path and signal. This entrance encourages vehicular traffic to the centralized parking and adorns the pedestrian experience with art and landscaping. As directed by the Planning Commission, we are currently working with the Urban Design Studio on the facade of the garage. Finally, Topanga Canyon Boulevard, which is the front door of the village, provides landscape relief to a state highway, setting the tone for world-class outdoor community experience. I'd, I'd like to add that the closest building uh, to the curb is 37 feet set off the curb. When you combine our commitments to encourage transit use, our transportation demand management program, and our physical improvements, the village will bring $13 million of investment to improving transportation in the West Valley. Since day one, we made a commitment to involve the community in this process. As I mentioned yesterday to the, to the River Committee, Committee, over the last two years, I've held almost 250 meetings with our neighbors and have had numerous discussions that have made the village a better project. In the end, what the community told us over and over again is they want a place where they can come together and enjoy the outdoors, a place where they can meet friends or spend a day with their families. The village was designed to transform an existing concrete and asf asphalt hardscape into two acres of linear parks where pedestrians and bikes can peacefully coexist along inviting paseos. I believe the street transformation of the village will be a signature feature of the project. With more than 550 trees and extensive landscaping, we can create linear parks along the perimeter at Owens Mouth, Irwin, Topanga Canyon, and Victory Boulevards. Here's a look at Victory Boulevard from Costco to Crate and Barrel. This will not only transform this area from concrete to green, but it also directly responds to the community's desire for the future of Warner Center to be defined by trees and parks. This transformation will be the single biggest community benefit of the entire project. In terms of the, um, these are very uh, elegant looking uh, images, but the growth of the trees, uh, are they going to be 
planted at a certain size, box size, or are we ready for them to grow into that size? Oh, I'm happy that you asked that because the image that we're looking at specifically uses existing trees on the site. We have nearly 25, and it may be 23, um, uh, mature trees that we, that we box up. We've proven that we can box them up and we transplant them along this corridor. Great. Okay. Including our commitment to create a true community gathering place, we have placed particular emphasis on providing a dedicated community center as part of the project for use as a cultural art venue and a community meeting space with programming for residents of all ages. We are currently working with Councilman Zine's office to deliver this benefit in 2012 before the first building of Phase 1 is complete. Woodland Hills has one of the most unique malls in the world. Nowhere else in the world will you find a Neiman Marcus, a Target, a Macy's, a Sears, and a Nordstrom all in one location. Our goal is to complete that experience with an anchor store that complements the existing center and caters to the same customer. After all, a Neiman Marcus shopper is also a Costco shopper. A Target shopper is a Costco shopper. And so is a Macy's, a Sears, and a Nordstrom shopper. Costco is one of the most sought after retailers in the nation and is one of the top seven retailers in the world. In 2013, the lease for Costco located on Roscoe Boulevard in Canoga Park expires. The data building and footprint does not allow Costco to provide the level of service and merchandise that it prides itself on. This is the only Costco in the West Valley and it's important to keep Costco in our community and in the city of Los Angeles. We've worked hard to integrate Costco and its design into the village in a way that is seamless and well planned. The Victory Boulevard experience starts with Crate and Barrel, a beautiful contemporary building that will define the victory frontage. From this beginning, we've carried the detail and the articulation to join the surrounding uses while creating a pedestrian corridor to appreciate this architecture. As you see, this takes an underutilized block that is unfriendly to pedestrians and creates a linear park with meandering sidewalks, art, and architecture. We've integrated the mix of uses in a beautiful outdoor setting. We're very proud to be here today and we're proud of this opportunity. I'd like to introduce you to Cindy Sterrett, who, as I mentioned earlier, is going to walk you through uh, some of the clarifying points from earlier and, and then the points that we, that we need to cover today. I just want to make sure we make time also for the speakers. We have a lot of speaker cards, so. We're aware of that. Thank you, sir. Okay, go ahead. Good morning, council members. I'm Cindy Sterrett from Latham and Watkins, 355 South Grand Avenue, Los Angeles. We're thrilled to be here. And contrary to the suggestions you heard earlier about an abbreviated process, we've been working on this project with the city since 2007. Uh, it's taken five years to get to this point. We had a recession that uh, threw us a curveball about halfway through. Um, but in 2009 and 2010, when Costco agreed to join us as the anchor tenant, we began the current phase of the project. And we just want to thank all the people that are here because the input that we've gotten from the neighborhood council, from supporters, from people who started out as opponents and are now supporters, from the urban design studio at the city, um, from the planning department, from DOT, has just been tremendous. And what you see before you and the reason the planning commission unanimously recommended approval today is a project that reflects the best of the process, the best of community collaboration, the best of urban design, and it does that in a way that's going to generate revenues and jobs for the city. So we're very, very proud of it. The appeals that you have before you today include appeals of our tract map, which was filed in December of 2010. We have an existing map approved on this site, which is still valid to build a primarily office project, including a 300-room hotel. Westfield felt it was important to make this a mixed-use project, which is why they embarked on this redesign. Uh, the new map is consistent with the existing plan. The city's been working on a new plan again for a number of years. It still hasn't been adopted. So what we did is we took uh, 10 design principles from the new plan. John spoke to a number of them and incorporated those into this design. So we feel that we're complying with the existing plan as staff has advised, as the hearing examiner concluded, as the planning commission determined, but we're doing that in a way that honors the spirit of the new plan from an urban design perspective. The mix of uses here is important. Um, the traffic is within the traffic envelope of the office project, but it's about half the square footage. The, the existing approval would be for two million square feet of office. We're asking that you deny the appeals that are before you today 
and approve the project's requested entitlements. It includes a phasing plan. You saw phase one and phase two. It does include a shared parking approval so all the sites can have centralized parking. Um, height increases, floor area averaging, a uniform sign program under the specific plan. All of these things have been carefully detailed. We have over 200 conditions, mitigation measures, um, project design features on all of these issues. We do have a change uh, that we've proposed to staff on the master conditional use permit for alcoholic beverages based on working with the council office. And that is that the conditions that staff adopted are those that we worked out with LAPD for Topanga across the street. It's worked very, very well. In fact, the Neighborhood Council approved those. The Council Office has asked for an additional condition on coordination with the Council Office to make sure that the ZA works closely with them as individual establishments come forward. So we've offered language to staff to address that concern of the Council Office. We'd ask that that additional condition also be included. The final EIR is very thorough. Every individual comment was answered, nearly a 1,000 comments. Um, it's over a 1,000 pages in the final EIR alone. Um, so we believe that staff's recommendation that you certify the EIR and adopt the findings of overriding considerations is fully appropriate. John mentioned the meetings with the community and the, the recent process that we've gone through, again, contrary to the statements that were made by the appellants, the Planning Commission and the staff did a very, very detailed analysis of this project. The Planning Commission did want to act in one session. The reason they did that is because Costco's lease is expiring and they felt that in order to show the new development reform, the ability of the city to work with an applicant, work out conditions, get a staff report out, make all the decisions in a prompt way that it was appropriate for them to act on that day, and, and we very much appreciate that. Um, so we, we think there is nothing valid at all about the appeal and Commissioner Roshan's actions. Um, Mr. Murley's individual points, we submitted a letter to you, which you have uh, before you, that addresses every one of the points that's in his appeal. And let me also note on sustainability that the, pro the Westfield component of the project will be silver lead, Costco asked instead to specify exactly what they do for sustainability, and the Planning Commission thought that was a good idea. So there's a five-page exhibit attached to the development agreement that sets forth all the individual sustainability uh, commitments that they've made. In terms of uh, the process as a whole, we understand that the Council Office has asked for another week on the development agreement. We respect that. We've worked closely with their office and they encouraged us to do what we have been doing for the last two years, to work with the community, to address all the comments. We think we've incorporated their concerns. I do want to briefly mention the public benefits that are already in this development agreement that was recommended to you by the Planning Commission. They include the community center. They include nearly a $10 million commitment to the streetscapes, linear parks, and bicycle paths that John mentioned. It includes a public art, a community kiosk uh, for the disabled, sustainability commitments, a local hiring program, and obviously we have a number of friends here that we would love to put back to work this year. And we can do that if the time frames work. Right now we're scheduled to be in council on February 7th, which would allow us to have a groundbreaking this year and get Costco open next year. We're worried about delays, but we're committed to making this, all of this work. Our transportation and TDM, $13 million. Enhanced crosswalks, again, we're working with the council office on specific design uh, questions that they have. And we've accepted the Planning Commission's recommendation that the term be reduced from 25 years to 15 years. We're asking that that development agreement go forward so we have the certainty to encourage investors in phase two. As the chair recognized, phase two includes office and hotel components, high-rise components that may take longer. We believe that if there is that assurance that the project has the entitlements to go forward over time, that we can attract those investors and make the whole project happen. Over $50 million before you today. We do have some details to work out uh, with the city attorney's office and with planning, as well as our meetings with the council office. We hope we can do that over the next week and be back here next week so that this project can be on track for the groundbreaking and we can get Costco open. And in okay. our last minute, I know Jackie Frank from Costco is here too. Okay, so. Afternoon, sir. Members of the council, my name is Jack Frank. I'm vice president of real estate development for Costco. Um, thank you very much. Um, just 
Uh, briefly, I'd like to uh, extend my thanks uh, on behalf of your staff, who has treated us uh, with tremendous courtesy and professionalism throughout this process. Uh, it's much, much appreciated. Um, just to underscore what both Cindy and, and John have said, uh, true, truly our lease does um, expire in the fall of uh, 2013. Um, we've uh, obviously been involved in uh, an extraordinary level of, of detailed studies, um, outreach efforts, um, and environmental review. The project is well thought out, well designed, and well studied, and we're very proud to be a part of it. Um, as you know, it, it takes time to uh, uh, work through the, uh, the efforts to begin both detailed design and pursue permitting through all the various regulatory agencies and departments. Um, the process needs to begin in earnest in order to make the schedule that we've, uh, that we've outlined before you. So with that, I would respectfully request on behalf of Costco um, for your favorable determination uh, to move this project uh, forward as expeditiously as you, as you feel you can. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your participation. We have uh, some speaker cards and... Um I know I gave a little bit more time for the appellants and I asked for the speakers, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up for some of the speaker cards. We have quite a few, so uh, we've heard a lot of detail about the development. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to add or you can just say support the project, that'd be great. So before us we have Robbie Hunter, Ron Miller, Kevin Bass, you're welcome to come on up, Jerry Cook. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, committee members. Uh, my name is Robbie Hunter. I'm a representative of 140,000 construction workers uh, from the Los Angeles and Orange County Building Trades Council. We're headquartered a few blocks from here at 1626 Beverly Boulevard. Uh, there, you know, this project with Westfield. Westfield have done over 200 meetings with uh, community groups. They have hundreds of items that they have done for mitigation. It's a green project. Uh, silver lead. It's a transit, uh, transit uh, tie-in. Uh, it's done much community benefits. It's done an agreement that all the construction will be done with construction workers from Los Angeles County and Los Angeles City in particular. And I think the uh, board members are well aware we have tens of thousands of people out of work at this time. And everywhere we go, projects are held up for years. This project itself has been on the board since 2007. And uh, Westfield, uh, everywhere they've been, and we've worked with them in, in Century City and many other places, they've always met their obligation. And uh, we support this project, and we urge a denial. We'd like to see it moving forward today. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Mr. Ron Miller. Good afternoon. I'm Ron Miller with the L.A. Orange County Building Trades. I work for Robbie. Uh, we have reviewed the EIR and associated documents, and this is a good project, you know. And Robbie mentioned that we have an agreement with the, with Westfield, all union agreement. It's going to put guys to work, and we desperately need it. We got 50 percent unemployment, and uh, in the construction industry, that has historically brought us out of these economic downturns. And uh, this is a job that can really do it. And it's shovel ready. You know, I know you've heard that term before. The uh, controller came out with a report about ARA funds today. How we missed the boat in L.A. with ARA funds. Well, this is a shovel-ready project, and uh, we can be out there working on it this year. Let's, get, let's do it. Thank you, sir. Kevin Bass. Jerry Cook. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, um, Planning Committee and Chair. Uh, my name is Kevin Bass. I'm a longtime resident of the San Fernando Valley. Um, I'm very familiar with this area. You could definitely use this type of project to enhance it, uh, build a tax base. Uh, in addition to being a resident of the San Fernando Valley, I'm also the uh, Assistant Political Director for the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades. We represent about 11,000 members uh, from the Southern California area, and we have about 30 percent unemployment. So this is the type of project we're looking for. We've been working on projects that have been put off for years and years, but this is something that's ready to go. So I'd really like to uh, express our support and ask for your support for this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Jerry Cook, then Steve Rascal. My name is Jerry Cook, representative with Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. Over the past several years, uh, Westfield has been a tremendous friend to the carpenters, and uh, I think that's been reciprocal. Uh, this is a project that will put thousands 
of our unemployed workers, hundreds of our workers, there are thousands unemployed right now, to work right away. That's tremendously needed, uh, generate the tax revenues for the city as well. Uh, strongly urge that we move this project forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Steve Asko, I'm going to give you this. And then Rachel Torres. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Pasco with the Southwest Regional Carpenters. Um, I, too, support this uh, project moving forward. You know, we have been partnered with Westfield for approximately eight years. I've never seen them do a project that was an outstanding in design and completion. Uh, and they've always fulfilled all their obligations to us, meaning that they employ our carpenters with good health care benefits, pension benefits, and top pay. We have thousands of members who are out of work. There's what, I think nationally, $2 trillion worth of money sitting on the sidelines. Everybody's scared to pull the trigger and make projects go forward. Everybody's uncertain. Westfield's going to make this commitment. All they need is a green light for you to go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Rachel Torres. Uh, buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Uh, mi nombre es Miguel Vides. My name is Miguel Vides. Vivo en el área de Van Nuys. I live in the Van Nuys area. Uh, también trabajo en el Hotel Sheraton Universal. I work at the Sheraton Universal Hotel. Trabajo por 14 años. I've worked there for 14 years. Uh, queremos decirle que hace un mes nosotros ratificamos un contrato. I wanted to let you know that um, just one month ago we ratified our contract. En donde en ese hotel ganamos buenos beneficios. At this hotel we won great benefits. Buenos salarios. Good, uh, a good salary raise. En buena seguridad médica. And good uh, health care insurance. Eh, también hemos ganado seguridad de trabajo. And we've earned job security. Y sobre todo, los trabajadores se sienten bien teniendo, teniendo uh, una mejor, un mejor salario para sus familias. Gracias. And so we've earned a good salary for our family, and we would like to see the same at this new hotel. Ok, muchas gracias, señor. Es, sí, es el momento. Vamos. Muchas gracias. ¿Quiere terminar? No. Sí, tenemos que terminar. No, un momentito más. No, ya acabamos con el minuto. Gracias. Ok, muy bien. Gracias. gracias. Ok. Sorry. Um, Good afternoon. My name is Rachel Torres. I'm a research analyst with Unite Here Local 11. I stand with many members of Unite Here who are standed here today. Um, after careful analysis of the EIR and the community benefits the developer offers, we find this project to be tremendously controversial and are adamantly opposed to the development. The project includes a 275-room hotel and no commitment to good jobs for the hundreds of hotel workers that will work there. At the Planning Commission hearing for this project, we supported staff's recommendations for living wages for the permanent employees. This is a very minimal standard and does not address other fundamental rights, such as affordable family health care, sustainable workloads, and respect on the job. Unfortunately, the developer was opposed to that standard and advocated that this only be a requirement if there was public financing. This project does not seek financing, and so we are in the same position that we were years ago when the project was first announced. In today's Los Angeles Times, Jonathan Tassini writes, not all jobs are equal, with the subline, a lower unemployment rate isn't enough. Americans need work that pays the bills. Please finish. This is the question before us today. It's not, is there public financing? The question is, have the economic principles that have been promoted for decades benefited major corporations at the expense of working families? We stand with millions of workers around the world who believe this is the case. We cannot wait for Washington, D.C. to get us out of the Great Recession. Forty-six million people, or about 15 percent of Americans, live in poverty, the Thank highest percentage since 1993. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We respectfully request that these issues be addressed as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Marisa Aho, A-H-O. Marisa, Warner Center Association. Then we have Roshan Ghazani from Valley Cultural Center. And then we have uh, Rose Goldwater. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Um, I am here representing the Warner Center Association. 
who um, would like to applaud Westfield in creating a project that follows the existing Warner Center specific plan while incorporating the future vision of Warner Center. We are confident that this project will be a catalyst and model for the next phase of development in Warner Center. Thank you, ma'am. Rashan Ghassani, and then we'll have Rose Goldwater. My name is Rose Goldwater. I have been a very productive member of the community since 1968 when I moved here. I was president of the chamber, the first woman president of the chamber, when we built the Warner Center. And the very people that were against the Warner Center are against this development. We need this Costco. I would like to see the whole development done before my life is done. I don't want to be protected by Gordon and Shirley. I can protect myself. I want to see this not only for all of us, but the entire community. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. And this is done. Good afternoon. Bye. Good afternoon. My name is Rashan Ghaznavi. I am the Executive Vice Chair of the Valley Cultural Center. Our offices are located at 21550 Oxnard Street, Suite 470 in Woodland Hills. Uh, I am here today on behalf of the Valley Cultural Center to express our strong support of the village at Westfield. Uh, we have a long-standing partnership in the community uh, with Westfield and share their vision to enhance the West Valley in meaningful ways. Uh, it has been designed to meet uh, the community standards in multiple ways. Uh, the project will be a model for responsible development in the city of Los Angeles and Warner Center. We are proud to have Westfield in our community and look forward to seeing the new community gathering space in the West Valley. On behalf of the Valley Cultural Center, I urge you to support and approve the village project and move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jesse Reyes Dunn, Corinne Ho, John Parker, Ron Alwood, welcome to come to the microphone. That we can just get the hearing moving. If you called your name, you're welcome to line up. Please, ma'am. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Tessie Reyes Dunn. And I just, I'm here on behalf of myself as the stakeholder of Winnetka for the last 60 years or more. And I'm also, uh, with Winnetka Neighborhood Council. And we voted unanimously when, um, John and Mike came over and presented their project. And I am totally, totally, and the whole council was, uh, in support, unanimously in support of this new project, which is like, uh, like you go to Europe and you see things like this. I, I don't shop. I, I'm not a shopper, but I would go to this because it's open. You can meet your friends. You've got the art center and everything there. And most of all, for all our young men, all our men that are back here deserve to get back to work. We had a, 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 a fundraiser of 52 families that are homeless and living in cars in Winnetka. We found out about it. The pair, the father lost their jobs and Thank the kids you. were in the cars. We donated money. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, so let's get these guys going, please. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilman Reyes and Councilman Krikorian, good afternoon. My name is Corinne Ho with the Canoga Park Neighborhood Council, and um, I serve as vice president on the council. I live on 7254 Vassar Avenue and have been a resident of Canoga Park for four years. I am here on behalf of the Canoga Park Neighborhood Council to express our strong support for the village at Westfield, Topanga. Our board voted to support this project because it will create thousands of new jobs, including opportunities for residents in Canoga Park. This is a huge economy boost for the area, and we are confident that this project will help bring new opportunities and investments in our neighborhood. We are also looking forward to the community benefits that this project will bring to the quality of life in our neighborhood, including usable open spaces, improved streetscapes, and new linear parks around the entire Thank project. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. We have John Parker, Ron Wood, Kim Metz, and Rolando Chavaria. Good day, sir. 
my name is Sean McCarthy. I'm here speaking on behalf of John Parker, who gave me the following statement to read. Like John Parker, I am also a member of the United Chambers. John of uh, the San Fernando Valley. John is the president. Our office is located at 5121 Van Nuys Boulevard, Suite 208 in Sherman Oaks. I'm here on behalf of United Chambers, who voted unanimously to support the village, uh, the uh, village at Westfield Topanga. Uh, Westfield is making a huge investment in the city of Los Angeles and here in the West San Fernando Valley with this project. This project will generate much needed revenue to the city and create thousands of highly, uh, uh, high quality jobs for local residents. The project will no doubt help retain, expand, and attract key businesses within our community. This project is needed. We know that the jobs will come with it. We hope that you will support it and do so as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sir? I'm Ron Wood, President and CEO of the Valley Economic Alliance. We're at 5121 Van Nuys Boulevard, Suite 200, Sherman Oaks, California, 91403. I'm here on behalf of the Board of Directors uh, to unanimously support the village at Westfeld, Topanga. I'd like to theme my remarks under quality. We know everyone here can see with, with their, for themselves that this is a quality project. It is going to wind up being a quality destination for retail shopping and dining. It has been well thought out and in all respects. It represents quality jobs and it re it's coming from a quality developer. History tells us that Westfield honors their commitments. They build fabulous projects and maintain them to the highest standards. I see no reason to believe that there would be any change here. Uh, we'd also like to point out that it represents quality new revenues that are sustainable. Thank you and very much, also sir. quality Thank investment. Much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Ken Metz, Ronald Chavaria, Stuart Waldman, and then Len Weather, I believe. Come on up, sir. Thank you. There you go. Good afternoon. I hope when you hear what I have to say, you might give me one extra minute because no one has touched on the basis of per seniors or persons with disabilities. I want to state that Westfield Mall and Costco have both been incredible when it comes to working with seniors and persons with disabilities. Westfield Mall has periodically allowed us to go to security and get someone to actually help us go around the various parts of the mall to help with shopping when it would be impossible to do by yourself just because of the size of the malls and getting from place to place. I'm hoping also that Westfield Mall will consider then uh, putting in uh, audible pedestrian signals and or the city planning, whoever's responsibility, that will be audible pedestrian signals at the outside lights. I'm also hoping that there will be a consideration for shuttles uh, around the mall for seniors and persons with disabilities as we would be taking access services, paratransit to go to and from and it would be hard to get from place to place if in fact uh, we had to try and gain all that area. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Are you done? Are you sure you're done? Well, I, I could zoom more. I didn't know if I heard well, the well, buzzer. Well, I, I, I was trying to comply with you. <laughs> um, I, I did want to say, though, that, that with these stores, especially, as I say, Costco, and having all the stores in one location, it makes it a lot simpler for persons who are blind or visually impaired and for seniors to be in one location to be able to get all the shopping done that they need than to be able to travel from place to place, especially since uh, I don't think you guys want me driving on the street. Um, <laughs> Um, Watch out for that corner. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really feel that you know the the uh, relationship that I personally have had with Westfield Mall as far as helping in the different malls. I've lived in Northern California. I've lived down here in the Southern California area, and they've always been just incredible about providing the type of assistance that would make it much easier for some of us to be able to shop that would be able that. to do it otherwise. Thank you for Thank that you. picture. Thank you very much, Ron Chavaria. Stuart Wildman, Lynn Ruger, and then Nora Ross. Good day, sir. Hello. Hi, my name is Rolando Chavaria. I lived in the San Fernando Valley for 25 years. I'm a student from Pierce College at LA Valley College. I support Westfield. Why? Because me, my residents, and my family in the San Fernando Valley are very excited about this development project from Woodland Hills area from Westfield. This project will help a lot of um, create more jobs, more business, 
businesses for students and for people who lost their jobs or who are looking for jobs like me. So I am very excited about this because the rest of the people in the San Fernando Valley needs this more development projects we want to see. We want to show that this the valley is starting to moving forward, more modernize this building, uh, more modern building, and we want to help people to stop in the homeless area and all that to start working again and we want to show that we want to have this California dream back because everybody's talking about the California dream that everybody's losing their jobs and everything like that so I hope San Fernando Valley needs to start moving forward thank you thank you sir Stuart Waldman good afternoon sir good afternoon Stuart Waldman I'm president of the Valley Industry and Commerce Association VICA here representing our 369 uh, business members who've created over 100,000 jobs in the San Fernando Valley. VICA strongly supports the village at Westfield, Topanga. By developing 30 acres of underutilized land in Warner Center, this project is a huge investment in the West Valley and one that will benefit the diverse businesses and communities of the San Fernando Valley. We applaud Westfield for investing in Los Angeles and in the Valley in particular. During these tough economic times, the project will be an incubator for growth and investment in our city. We're asking that you take a position today. The project can create jobs immediately. Let's move this. The time has come. We greatly appreciate Westfield's continued commitment and investment in the San Fernando Valley and urge the uh, Plum Committee to approve the project without delay. Also, I know that business and labor don't always agree, but on this one, we are in agreement. I have a letter from SEIU supporting this project. Thank you very much, to give you. Thank you very much. Lynn Wheeler, uh, Ross, Diana Williams. And Lydia Alegria. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. My name is Lynn Ruger. I live at, have lived at 5800 Owensmouth Avenue since 1981. That would be 31 years. I am in favor of the village at Westfield. I'm very familiar with the um, Westfield Topanga that is there now as I walk in the mall at least two times a week. It is always immaculate. The security is extremely good. There's a really good mix of stores. There are frequent, well-publicized planned activities for the community. They work to be green. They have solar units on the roof, drought tolerant landscaping. Um, their new buildings are going to be LEED certified. John Alderman and Makoto are very welcoming to the community and interactive in a good way. What do they bring to the table? Well, they know how to develop and maintain a mall. They're including in their building a 4,000 square foot multi-purpose community center and perhaps most important, they have money to bring to the project. To conclude, we've arrived at the decision that the time to move forward with to Westfield, Village at Westfield is now. Thank you very much. We're almost there, very, very close. Okay, next. Good afternoon, my name is Nora Ross. I'm the executive director for the Canoga Park West Hills Chamber of Commerce. Our offices are located at 7248 Owens Mouth Avenue in Canoga Park. I'm here today on, on behalf of the entire board of directors who have voted to strongly support the village project. Since moving into the West Valley, Westfield has proven to be a leader bringing new growth and businesses into the community. This project has been well received with this residents excited to see these projects becoming a reality. It is our belief that the City of Los Angeles should strongly support the projects, like the Village, that encourage economic growth while benefiting the community at large. Therefore, the Canoga Park West Hills Chamber of Commerce we urge you to approve the Village at Westfield Topanga as it moves forward and, excuse me, and enhances the economic recovery in the West San Fernando Valley. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Right on the wire. Diana Williams, Lydia Alegria, Paul Pecton, and Michelle Lawson Dunfus. Good day, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Diana Williams. I'm the CEO of the Woodland Hills Tarzana Chamber of Commerce. Our offices are located at 20121 Ventura Boulevard in Woodland Hills. I'm here today on behalf of the Woodland Hills Tarzana Chamber of Commerce to express our support for the village at Westfield Topanga. Westfield is making a huge investment in the city of Los Angeles and in the West Valley and quite honestly I'm grateful that Westfield and, and Costco and the investors have not only the expertise to move forward with this but the funds to invest in LA and West Valley. The project will improve the quality of life in the West Valley and, general thousands, and generate thousands of much needed jobs here in LA. 
We have also been incredibly impressed with Westfield's level of community outreach related to the project. John Alderson has held the hundreds of meetings with community members and has worked hard to ensure that this project serves the best interest of our community. Over Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we strongly urge you to support the project. Thank you. Thank you. Lydia Alegria, Paul Pacton, and Michelle lawson -Dorfus. Is Lydia Alegria here? Lydia Alegria? Okay, going once, twice. Paul Pacton, are you here? Don't see Paul. Michelle lawson Dorfus. Good day, ma'am. Good Hi. afternoon. I'm a member of the United Chambers of Commerce Board of Directors, and I live in Calabasas, which is adjacent to the new project. I'll make this brief, and my point is that the issue on appeal is about the public benefit and how it's somehow not satisfied. It's ironic that that would be the reason for the appeal. In reality, the constant delays created by these appeals is actually denying the public of all sorts of benefits. You've seen union representatives here representing carpenters, thousands of them who are unemployed. You've seen a project that is actually going to comply with LEED Green certified standards above those that most other construction projects can even possibly comply with. You see them creating a transportation hub in the valley like we've never seen before. You see a new community center accommodating seniors. Thank you, ma'am. I Thank urge you, you to support the project and examine the rationale of this appeal. Thank you, ma'am. Ed Crow, Taylor, Jan Sobel, A.C. Rosenberg. We, call, we hear your name coming up. Deborah Barbara Shaw. So we have Ed Crow, Doug Little, I believe, or Little. Good afternoon. My name is Jan Sobel. I'm president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of the West Valley at 7245 Remit Avenue in Canoga Park. I'm not here to talk about new jobs. I'm not here to discuss Costco or parking structures. But I'm here to talk to you about Westfield and its commitment to the San Fernando Valley, especially the West San Fernando Valley. <laughs> they have, long before this project came into being, they were supporting the charities and the nonprofits in the West San Fernando Valley generously at every turn. Part of this project will include a community room, which will mean everything to us nonprofits. We hope that we can utilize it for our teens on the weekend so that they have a place to go and have a party or have an early night where they can be safe and off the streets. It's not about Westfield and their building, it's about their character. They are committed to the community, and we wholly support this project because of their character, and we appreciate your support. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Ed Crow. I'm a long-term uh, resident of the uh, West Valley. I be, I've lived there for 23 years. I'm a small business owner. And I'm involved in the community at various levels. I also publish a local uh, paper. And as a publisher and as a community activist, I have directly seen the tangible benefit of Westfield as a community partner, as a supporter of all nonprofits. I see it every day. And we, I urge you to get that uh, ground break now so that we can get people back to work. And uh, uh, I also uh, am a direct beneficiary of, uh, uh, because uh, I'm on several boards of nonprofits, and I see their contribution, a direct contribution to the community, to the community building uh, events, and to other organizations that uh, uh, do need the support. So I urge you to uh, support the- Thank you, Mr. Crow. The next speaker, come on up. Good afternoon, sir. Al Rosenberg of West Hills. Um, good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm here on behalf of Westfield, and I support this project 100%. Uh, and I want you, the Planning Commission, to put this project in 
first gear as soon as possible so we can get people back to work, jobs, and I hear a rumor that people might be able to buy some homes soon from the banks. Also, I remember that it will, it will be a happy and more year if Westfield is built this year. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Michael Court, are you here? Uh, Debbie Barbashaw and Doug Lilly, I believe. I'm uh, Debbie Barbashaw. I live at 22500 Bass at West Hills, California. Um, I guess you raised an issue about the river. I've, I've worked with uh, my city councilman in keeping the river beds clean, and it is not, Owen South is the name of a river, but it is not, it is, the beds are um, channeled by Canoga Park High, and that's up by Van Owen, and it's, it, there are no river beds in the West, West, Westfield Topanga area, as far as I know. I support the project. I think it's an excellent, excellent thing to do. And um, just in the position, position that you question that, I just thought I'd clear it up for you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, come on up. I'm Doug Luton. This is my wife, Victoria. We live on Marmel in Woodland Hills. We've Welcome. Been, been there 25 years, and I've lived and grown up in the valley for 60 years. Numbers count. This is five years from start to this point. Uh, that's a long time, and a project shouldn't be rushed of this magnitude, but five years is plenty. 11,000 citizens have responded with cards, 8,000 before and 3,000 now, all in support. That number should count. 7,000 jobs, that should count. 3,000 construction, good paying union jobs stand in your hands. 4,000 jobs beyond that. A quarter of a billion dollars of income every year dependent on this. $53 million in public benefits from this company. I would just like to add that I think Westfield has just been a steadfast, wonderful partner. And I think any plan that they present is going to be outstanding. They actually improve things after the fact. Thank you, ma'am. And I appreciate that. Thank you. If you can just fill out a card to make sure your name is on the record, we appreciate that. Uh, so we have Michael Court. Is Michael here? From Lonark Street. Okay. Uh, last two cards, we have Mr. Rohendra Navarro from the mayor's office. Good afternoon, uh, Councilman Reyes and Councilman Kokorian. Uh, my name is Raheli Navar uh, with the Mayor's Office, and I'm here to express the Mayor's Office strong support for this project, uh, the planned development for Westfield Shopping Center. Uh, Westfield has been over the years a very responsible, competent, and dedicated long-term partner of the City of LA, and they understand the importance of high-quality development as well as community participation, sustainability, and walkability. Uh, I want to commend Westfield's efforts uh, in engaging the community, as is evidenced by the over 240 meetings that they've had with the community and city staff, uh, as well as the considerable support that they've garnered. Um, the village at Westfield Topanga will help fuel uh, the engine of economic growth for the West Valley. Uh, phase one alone has will generate over 700 jobs as well as 1700 post construction jobs uh, which are about 75 percent uh, that will be directly on site uh, moreover phase one of the project will be anchored by a new and eagerly anticipated Costco uh, which will help generate significant and vital tax uh, sales tax revenue for the general fund in the city that's desperate desperately needed now thank you thank you, thank you for your presence and your patience uh, we do have with us Daniel Stolick representing the council office and that will conclude public comment and close the public hearing. Thank you, all honorable council members. Uh, my name is Daniel Skolnick for Council Member Dennis Sign. Uh, the council office would like to thank the stakeholders, the city staff, and Westfield. We are continuing to work with Westfield, and at this time, uh, the council member would like to ask for a week of continuance on this item. I'm so, here so we want, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm here for questions. Okay, so we have one week continuance being requested by the council office, and that fits within the time frames of this process, correct? Yes, it does. Great. Uh, what date will that be, to have a date? The 
The weekend committee would be February 7th. However, the appeals are currently scheduled for council on the 7th. So therefore, if a, if this, these two appeals, which are time limit, are continued to the 7th, then the council dates should be rescheduled for February 21st. So next Tuesday is the 31st, correct? Oh, um, yes, I'm sorry, it is the 31st. <laughs> it's the 31st, yes. So, uh, so that gives us ample time to go from committee, and if anything, it depends what happens on that day, but we will have time to go to council after that? Um, then under council, um, it's, let's see, 31st. A decision has to be made uh, to, in order to keep the originally scheduled uh, council date of February 7th, uh, 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 the committee must make a decision on the 31st. Okay, and the 7th falls on what day? Tuesday, sir. Okay. So that is still one week from that decision. So, exactly. All right. So that's what we will do. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilman. We will target the 31st uh, for continuance, correct? Right, correct. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So that will close public hearing, it will close public comment, and hopefully at that point we will have uh, more focused discussion on the substance of the issues, and uh, then we'll go through that. Are we okay, Councilman? So, Mr. Chair, all three items are continued to the 31st. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Councilman? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I think um, that brief of a continuance, I, I suppose, works as long as we can stay on track. I have to say, um, this has been an overwhelming uh, demonstration of, of community support, and I think this seems, I appreciate the opportunity to have a more substantive discussion uh, at our next meeting. Um, but I think that it's important that we move with all deliberate speed uh, to get this kind of project moving so that we can, I mean, five years is a long time, and I think we need to get moving. We need to get this wrapped up with all deliberate speed so we can get these guys back to work and get a good, get the, this community benefiting from this package that, uh, uh, that you all have put together. So um, a week is fine. Okay. Any longer than that, I think I'd be very uncomfortable with. Okay, so that's our target date, and that'll be the action of this committee. And just for the record again, public hearing and public comment is closed, and uh, we'll never take one step at a time. Anything else we need to do? Nope. Okay, we covered a couple of public comment already. Seeing that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.